Good morning. It is so good to be in a nice, warm church. Amen. Together, coming together to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's so faithful. He's so worthy to be praised. And so we're going to go ahead and open up the service and get ready for praise and worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Yes. If you are able, let's stand to our feet this morning. Let's position ourselves to come into the presence of God together to worship the King of Kings. Lord, we just give you glory and honor and praise today. We thank you that you're in this place. And so, Father, we come to worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I praise in the valley. I praise on the
Sometimes you face certain circumstances and that rain comes and that wind blows. But if your foundation is strong on the Lord, nothing can shake you. Amen.
so much to be thankful for and on Christmas Eve I became a grandma I am now known as Jima and I can remember when I was probably Skyla my youngest daughter's age she's about to turn eight and I can remember we were so involved in church being raised by a praise and worship leader we were there every door the time the doors would open and I'm so thankful and grateful for the foundation that my mom laid out for me. And the complete Bible was always shared in our home. There was never a chapter that was left out. So I grew up knowing about the rapture. And I can remember at night at eight years old praying to the Lord saying, But Father, I want to have a family. And I know that you're soon to come again, but I want to have a family. I want to be a grandma. So now that I'm a grandma, y'all better just keep watching those skies. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. Okay, Lord, where are you? <laughs> but he is a father who is faithful. And he understands the desires of our hearts. And even if he wanted to come again before my grandbaby was born, I would have been happy with that. However, I'm so grateful that he gives us the desires of our hearts. And we've been praying over this baby, and Aaliyah is doing a beautiful job. So today, I want to give thanks for my grandson.
Can we just lift our hands to the Lord right now? The presence of the Lord is so sweet in this place. The Lord reminded me of a couple of scriptures this morning as we were preparing for church. And the first one was in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. It says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest, rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. And as the Lord was speaking this scripture to me this morning, I just saw some of some of us here today, and you may be watching online, that you feel like your shoulders have been just heavy burdens, that they've been brought down, that you've been carrying a heavy load. And it reminded me of whenever you've been carrying something really heavy, when you've picked it up and you're carrying it for a long time and it's real heavy, then you finally get to go set it down. Your arms become light as could be. And you've been so tired of carrying those heavy things. And the Lord wants you to know today that he sees the things that you're going through. And those things that have become heavy are things that you're not meant to carry on your own. You're meant to give those to God because only He can take care of those things. Only He can work that stuff out for you. And I just feel with all of my heart, and I just feel the Lord saying that when you lay that burden down to Him today, that He's going to give you rest for your soul. You've been trying to find rest, and you've been so weary and wondering how you're going to make it another step. But today, God's going to give you rest for your soul as you learn to depend on Him and trust Him and give Him that burden. Then He reminded me of Paul and Silas when they were in jail and they were bound and shackled. And it was at midnight. There they were thrown into prison for doing good. They were serving God and they were thrown into prison. But something happened when they were worshiping God when they were lifting their praise to the Lord, the chains fell off and the Lord set them free. So there's two things that the Lord is requiring of you today. For all of you that are burdened and heavy laden, he's requiring you, number one, that you acknowledge he's the one that's going to be the one to give you rest for your soul. He's the one that's going to be able to take that burden off of you, but you've got to give it to him. Amen. And the second thing he requires is a heart that wants to worship him. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. In the presence of God is where he comes and he does that healing and he sets you free. So today, if you've been carrying something that's heavy and has been burdened, then today I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. If you can stand to your feet, stand to your feet and come to the Lord and say, Father, I give it to you today. I lay it down to you at your feet and I worship you because you're mighty. You're mighty to say, Father, we give those burdens to you today. Let's sing that one more time. Worship the Lord together. You
as we lay our burdens down at your feet, that you give us rest for our soul. And Lord, I thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding is guarding our heart and mind today in Christ Jesus. But Lord, as we lay these burdens down to you, we're not going to pick them back up. We can't figure things out on our own, but we are trusting in you that you know the best for us and that you're going to take care of these things for us. But also, Lord, we're going to come to you with a worshipful heart, a heart of worship, that we worship you and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And everyone said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Turn to someone today and tell them it's so good to see them. Amen. Hallelujah. God's so good. Amen. Amen. Well, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord today. We've got a lot of good things coming up here at Good Shepherd. And so it's so wonderful to see each and every one of you. Here in just a few minutes, we will be receiving our tithe and offering, and there's several ways you can give. You can text the word GIVE to 502-822-2001. There's also envelopes in the seats in front of you, and you can grab that envelope. You can put your offering in there, and the ushers will be coming by, and they will be receiving our tithe and offering here in just a moment. And then also, we will, at the end of service, uh, the ushers will be passing out a prayer slip for your prayer request. So just let you know that. And if you need a pen, we'll have those for you as well. But we will be doing that here in just a moment. I just want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your giving. Because God is so faithful, we are able to serve our community every week in our food pantry. And so we're grateful for each and every one of you. And so we are getting ready to um, have youth this Wednesday. This Wednesday at 6.30, we will be meeting next door. I'll be teaching you youth this week. And so we'll be meeting next door. Sarah, she's getting ready for a baby. She's got a rest. That baby's coming soon. I'm so glad. And so um, I'll be teaching youth this Wednesday at 6.30. So bring your youth out. It's going to be a wonderful time. We're going to have Bible study over here in the foyer. Pastor's going to be teaching about hosting the Holy Ghost. I am so excited. I hope he teaches the lesson to me before he teaches you all Wednesday because I won't be there. So I hope he gives me a little lesson before then. But this is going to be a fantastic time. Listen, new year, the new year is a fresh new beginning, right? And maybe you've been wanting to come on Wednesday night in the middle of the week and it's been kind of hard for you to get here or even get in the habit of coming in the middle of the week. Let me tell you, you will not be disappointed if you come and join us we come at 6 30 to 7 30 it is a wonderful time to connect together with a small group and grow together but be encouraged in the middle of the week I don't know about you but come Wednesday at work I'm ready to be encouraged together with the body of believers and so listen I want to encourage you start out that new year with good habits and come Wednesday you won't be sorry that you came you will love it so join us this Wednesday for those things and then we're going to be starting our fast And so we do a 21 day of prayer and fasting here at Good Shepherd every year. And this is just a time corporately that we can come together and we can be believing God together for some amazing things that he wants to do. It's a way that we come and humble ourselves before the Lord and we seek after him because you know what? I don't have enough of God. I want more of God every day. What I had of the Lord yesterday is not enough for today. I want more, more of him. And this is an opportunity that we take that time to do that. Pastor will talk even more about that um, today as well. But there's a couple of resources. There's one that we turn to every year that's so encouraging. We love this fasting book by Jensen Franklin. Whenever you're in the middle of a fast and you've given up some some things for the Lord and it becomes hard, it's always good to grab a hold of some encouragement. And he shares a lot of testimonies in there of people that have been fasting and And God do breakthroughs through those things. So this is a wonderful resource. You can grab a book on Amazon. We have one here. Something that the Lord was speaking to me to do this year. Every year, you know, sometimes the Lord has us do a Daniel fast, just different things like that. But this year particularly, the Lord spoke to me about sugar. How help me, Lord. And so anyway, so I'm going to be doing a sugar detox, but I came across this, another pastor friend of mine, she's doing it as well. 
And this is just something I'm going to be doing. And I wanted to share this resource. I've been following her on Facebook. She started January 1st posting scriptures and and a whole thousands of people doing this together and hearing people you know about it it's called the 40 day sugar fast by wendy speak and you know if you've got a library card you can check this out at the library you can purchase this on amazon you can get it at hobby lobby for half off but it's a great devotional book and so something i'm going to do but just some resources there for you but if our ushers are ready to receive our tithe and offering we're going to go ahead and pray over it Lord, we just thank you for today and thank you for the opportunity to come and to give to you. We're thankful that you've blessed us in so many ways. And we're thankful that we're, we've been blessed to be able to give to further your kingdom and the work that you want to do. So, Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone in this place and bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Just one. Aren't you thankful for the Spirit of God? His Spirit is here. God is so good. Uh, we welcome you this morning. I want us to look this morning at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit is here, and you are speaking to us. We already sense it right now, God. I ask God for your grace that makes preaching powerful. I ask that you would speak to us, change us, challenge us, and convict us, encourage us, God. And we thank you for the Spirit of God that's in this place, Lord, and you're ministering to your people in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. It is a new year. It is a new season. How many know just because it's a new year doesn't mean it's a new you? It's going to take new habits to get a new you. And just changing the calendar doesn't change anything. And it is a blank slate. It is a new opportunity. It is a new season 
for us to make the changes that the Lord may be speaking to us. And as believers, we need to be the ones that are setting the pace. And we're not going to let the news set the pace. We're not going to let even uh, friends set the, pl- the pace, our family set the pace. But as believers and filled with the Spirit of God, we need to set the pace. That we are the thermostat, not the thermometer. It's easy to check to check the temperature and say, okay, it's doom and gloom if you watch the news. And yes, the forecast says this, and and you can sense some things maybe happening in the spirit realm. But as believers, we need to be the ones that are setting the temperature in our homes. We need to be the ones setting the temperature at work. We're not the ones being influenced, but we are the ones doing the influencing that we are led by the Spirit of God, and we are called to set the pace. A few things real quick about our fast, and I know people are going to participate that couldn't be here today, but I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk about just for a moment before I get into my message. Every year we do a 21 days of prayer and fasting. It begins tonight at midnight, and it will end on the 28th. We're going to have a special service that that morning, but fasting disconnects us from the world, and prayer connects us to God. But fasting is taking time to remove the distractions of our normal schedule to focus on God, to hear His voice. It's not about us manipulating God or twisting God's arm, but it's about us humbling ourselves to position ourselves that we can hear from God. And where are the areas of your life that you need to hear from God? direction about your your health or your finances or your career or even your family we need to hear the voice of God fasting is not starvation it's not a diet it's not a hunger strike but it is a spiritual discipline that draws us closer to God one at the beginning we've been here almost 15 years coming up in April and one of our first fasts, we had a couple that were praying and said, I want to believe God for children. We want children. We're kind of known as the, the baby church where we've been able to pray for people and God's done miracles where people that were struggling to have kids and we're able to have kids and God gets all the glory. I think we're up to 14 or 15, but they were there specifically said, we're believing God that we're going to be able to get pregnant and have a kid. They ended up, they shared that request. You guys praise God prayed God did his part and miracles happened guess what they didn't just have one kid they had two kids and so I want to encourage you be specific when you pray don't pray just a generic Mickey Mouse kind of prayer but be specific and I believe we ought to ask for more in 2024 let's ask for more than just barely getting by just barely making it we need Uh, God to move, our country needs revival, our state needs revival, our church needs revival, our families need revival, and that happens with God. And so I'm going to encourage you to participate in one way or another. And uh, that's a complete fast. There's a liquid fast. There's a Daniel fast. In the Daniel fast, you may have heard that. It's no meats, sweets, dairy, fruits, or vegetables, or water. Or maybe God's calling you to do a partial fast. The best said that you're going to do a sugar fast. We've had people give up soda. We've had people give up coffee. We had one new convert that were saved one year. And they said, Pastor, I'm giving up hard liquor for the fast. And I said, well, praise God. You know? <laughs> and so maybe that's something some of you, if you're new, need to try that out. <laughs> and so wherever you are at in your journey, I want you to participate in some way. There's people that do a sun up to sundown. There's people that are fasting sweets or fasting breads, and it's, a, it's not a thing that we are trying to manipulate God, but we want to humble ourselves. Say, God, we need more of you. There has to be more to it than this, God. We want more of you and your presence. And John said, I must decrease and you must increase, Lord. And there's even like for my daughter, Sarah, she's pregnant eight, nine months almost, and you know, she can't do a typical fast, but there are social media fasts. There's, you can fast our, our shows and, and spend time in the presence of God. Maybe some of you need to fast caffeine and uh, just opportunities for us to position God. We're going to be sharing devotions if you're a part of our Facebook group on that. And Beth said there's the groups on there and to give you more resources throughout the week. But I want us to look this morning at Deuteronomy 32. <clears throat> kind of a... A theme I feel for the year 
and the Lord spoke this word to me, and it, and it sounded uh, unique to me, and it was the year of the upright. And as believers, God has called us to be upright. How many of you felt like you were kicked around in maybe the last couple of years, even with COVID, and you ended the year upside down? I believe Lindsay's got a picture here. You got a picture of somebody upside down. You have that, Lindsay? There's some of your Christmas pictures. And, uh, <laughs> you know, have you ever felt like that? Man, you're just trying to get back over, get, get uh, traction to keep moving again. But the Lord really spoke that, and he spoke this picture, yet so many people seem like they, they feel like they've been upside down, and they're trying to get traction, trying to get movement, and God has called us to be the upright, not uptight. How I many know there's a difference between being uptight and upright? And God has called us as believers that, that we are followers of him. I want us to look here at this Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. Here was Moses, and he's singing a song. And notice this beautiful lyrics in verse number 4, and I'm reading for the New Living. Deuteronomy 32, 4 in the New Living. He is the rock. Man, this seems like an uncertain, unstable year coming up, an election year, the economy. Who knows what in the world can happen. But here is some encouragement that Moses gives us. He is the rock. Praise God. Our God is the rock. There is certainty, there is stability in him, no matter what anybody else says. He is the rock, and his deeds are perfect. Isn't that awesome? That our God is perfect, and every blessing comes down from the, the Father of lights. Notice what it says, that he does everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright is he? That we serve a God that is upright. That he's not under. He's not barely hanging on. He's not just trying to keep his head above water. But our God is the rock. Our God is upright. And as followers of Jesus, how many know we ought to be upright? We're not on the bottom, we are the head, and we are not the tail. We're overcomers. We're not defeated. Amen? We are upright. And I'm going to look at a few scriptures this morning. Let's look at Psalms 37, 37. It says this in the New King James Version, Mark the blameless man and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace. Well, Pastor, I have anxiety about 2024. I am anxious about the election. I am uncertain about my future in this career. But notice what it says here. Observe the upright man. For the future of that man is peace. We don't have to lose sleep over this coming year. We don't have to be upset and tore up that we can't eat and our stomach's a mess because of the future. Notice what this word upright in the Hebrew means, righteous, straight, and level. That I am not shaky. The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. But we are upright. We are level. Some of, some of you are like me. You're, you're level. You've got the bubble in the middle. You know, if you've got a level, you've got a bubble in the middle. <laughs> And we need to be upright before the Lord. Where, is, where are there areas in your life that you're leaning? That you're leaning the wrong direction. And you know it. And you are the average of your five closest friends. And you know that God is calling you to be upright. Again, I'm not talking about being legalistic. It's not about the way you dress, wear makeup or no makeup or, or don't do this and do do this. But no, it's about having a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Are there areas in your life where you are leaning away from God? Are there people that are pulling you away from God where I am no longer upright, but I'm leaning this way? You're leaning towards temptation. I'm leaning towards destruction. I'm leaning toward addiction. I'm leaning this way, or I'm upright before God. Acting right doesn't make you a Christian, but being a Christian should make you upright, should make you act right. It's not about acting right making you a Christian, but it's a Christian ought to act right. I heard about a preacher years ago, 
and he had just received a calling to go to Houston, and he had an, an occasion to take the, the bus there in town, and he got on the bus, and he paid his fare, and the driver gave him back his change, and he got to his seat, and he noticed that the person to give him a, a quarter extra on his fare, gave him too much money, and so he had a, a decision to make. He could have said, oh, praise God for that 25-cent blessing. But instead, the Lord began to speak to him and said, I want you to take that change and give it back to the driver and say, hey, you've made a mistake here. This is not mine. This belongs to you. And he wrestled around and said, it's just 25 cents. What does it really matter? And at the end of his journey, he got up and went to the driver and said, sir, you gave me too much change here, and I want to return what was yours. He said, aren't you the new preacher in town? <laughs> he said, I wanted to see what you would do if I gave you the wrong amount of change. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll be at church Sunday. How many people are watching us? And there's opportunities in all of our lives every week that we can fudge, you know what I mean, that we can, we can just kind of skirt the gray areas there. But friends, people are watching us, and we need to be a witness and make a difference. And there's people that will push your buttons waiting on your response. They're waiting on your reaction. And then they'll blow up because of your reaction. Uh, they went overboard, and they did the wrong thing. But they're waiting for you to blow up just so they can say, I'll oh, see there's nothing to this Christianity stuff. You're just like me. No, I'm not. I am changed by God. So I want to encourage you, watch your thoughts because they become words. Watch your words because they become actions. Watch your actions because they become habits. Watch your habits because they become character. And watch your character because it becomes your destiny. Let me give you another blessing of the upright. It says in Psalms 112.2, it says their children will be successful everywhere. How many want your kids and your grandkids to be successful? That's the desire of every parent that I know. Every grandparent says their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly, upright people will be blessed. The same Hebrew word, yashar, that as believers that we're going to walk upright. And friends, mom, dad, grandparents, when you walk upright before the Lord, our kids are blessed behind us. And, you, and some of us think, well, I wish my kids would do this, and I wish my kids would make this decision. What are you and I doing? I can't control their, their actions, but I can control my example that I want to set for them. They're following us in our footsteps, whether you recognize it or not. And so we need to make sure that we're walking before the Lord. It says this in Psalms 11, verse 7, For the righteous love justice, and the upright will see his face. The same Hebrew word, Yashar, the righteous, straight, and level, they will see his face. How many want to see his face in 2024? It says if we walk upright, if we are upright through God, I'm not leaning one way. I'm not upside down. I'm not defeated. I'm not depressed. I'm not overcome. But I am in the presence of God. Notice what it says. That we need to be right with God. Righteousness is being right with God. I'm not talking about legalism here. I'm not talking about just because we do a fast that we're right with God. But that is about humbling ourselves to put us in position. Notice what it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21. For God made Christ who never sinned to be an offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Jesus Christ. I want you to know that you are right with God through Jesus if you are a believer. If not, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today you can be made right. Your kids can get a new dad. Your kids can get a new mom. They can get a new family member when they make a change and put their faith in Jesus. The Bible says that we are a new creation in Jesus. And so we need to make a decision that we're going to live for God. Let's look at Proverbs 15, 7. So I'm going to give you four habits of the upright. I just sense this, that we need to set the pace. Set the pace for your family. 
Set the pace for your kids. Set the pace for your coworkers. Don't let your coworkers be the one to set the atmosphere at work. But we're going to set the atmosphere at work. Proverbs 15, 19. I want you to turn there with me. Proverbs 15, 19. And the New Living says this. A lazy person's way is blocked with briars. But the path of the upright is an open highway. <laughs> Pastor, I don't know what to do. I don't know what God's will is for my life. The Bible says if we walk upright before God, it is an open highway. Life is a highway, praise God. That you don't have to be concerned, oh, I don't think we're going to make it. I think we're going to go up. The Bible says the path of the upright, not that they're just a downright scoundrel. No, we are upright before God. We're serving our God. A lazy person's way is blocked with briars, but the path of the upright is an open highway. The same Hebrew word, yeshar, that we are level, we are righteous through God. He said it's an open highway. Well, Pastor, there may not be room for me. I may not get the opportunity. Friends, your life is an open highway. The Bible says that your gifts will make room for you. Amen? It's interesting right before church. And so I'm going to look at this. Here is the first one is be productive. Even though we're right with God, you still need to be productive. You know that? A lazy person is blocked with briars, but the path of the upright is an open highway. Every I have to go to the doctor every week. I had a heart valve replaced almost 10 years ago now. And so I have to go get my blood tested every week. It has to be a certain thinness. And I've never, to my knowledge, missed a doctor's appointment. But the week before that doctor's appointment, just this morning, I got a reminder that I have an appointment in, in February, a month from now, to get my blood tested. And then the week of the appointment, I'll get a reminder, an email from my doctor, say, hey, you have an appointment this Friday. And then every day before that appointment, I get a text message on my phone saying, hey, just a reminder, you have a doctor's appointment at 10 o'clock on Friday. And then I go to the doctor and I ask, I said, why, why am I getting all these messages? He said, you wouldn't believe how many messages we send out and people still don't show up for the doctor and miss their appointment. You know the same thing happens at church? We shouldn't have to send out 100 text messages to remind you that church is on Sunday at 1030. <laughs> this church has been here over 53 years. Every Sunday, 1030. It's not a guess. Well, I wonder if they're having church. I mean, if it's not two foot of snow, we're going to have church. We, we had no electric this summer. Guess what? We still had church next door. The team assembled and we got it done. So it shouldn't be a surprise. But really it comes down to just being lazy. It's easy to lay in bed and check in on the live stream, make a comment, and then check out. That's what I said. Just, just cancel the live stream. You got to come to church to see what's going on. But the upright are productive. Amen? Here's the second one. There was productivity. Here's the second. We need patience. Let's look at Proverbs 21, 29. Proverbs 21, 29. In the New Living said, The wicked bluff their way through, but the virtuous or the upright in King James, they think before they act. The upright, I want to be upright, Pastor. Then you better think before you act. So don't go into work, say, it's a new year, it's a new me, I quit. Don't quit your job without another job. You better think before you act. Don't blow up at work. Think before you act. Amen? This is the same Hebrew word, yeshar, the righteous, the straight, the level. They think before they act. 
You better pray about before you take that job. You better pray before you get married. You better pray before you uh, buy the car. You better pray before you buy the house. You better pray before you make that investment. You better pray and seek the Lord. Someone once said that hurry is worry on steroids. Hurry is worry on steroids. Have you ever went to Gatlinburg and they want to do a timeshare? We got to do this right now, right now, right now. We need this right now. We'll set you up. We'll give you a free $100 bill or whatever. And you come set, spend your whole day of your vacation just to watch my, my presentation to give you 100 No, my vacation's worth more than $100. I said, not today. And some of you are afraid to tell people no. And it's okay to tell people no. I don't have time for that. That's not in my my. my plans i'm already booked for that day it is okay it is a spiritual thing to say hey not today there's people they you know you buy a taco bell and it's hey you want to round up 13 you know round it up no i already gave at church not today i already gave at church that's one benefit of giving tithing hey i gave at church Listen to what it says in Hebrews 10, 35, and 36, talking about patience. So don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. How many know that that's trust when we're patient? Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Pastor, I want to do God's will, and I got I to gotta jump and do this. How many know the Bible talks about us? He gives an example of taking steps of faith, not necessarily a leap of faith. Sometimes we need to be patient and wait on the Lord. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. And then you will receive all that he has promised. Say all that he's promised. Praise God. Praise God. All that he's promised. There are years that we have fasted and prayed about particular things, and we didn't see it in those 21 days. We saw it after the fact. There's been a couple of them we saw it the next year or two years down the road, and sometimes we get ourselves in a mess, and God has to cut through all the red tape and position things to the right time to get to the right place. And I want to encourage you that it's on the way if you don't give up. The only way that we lose is if we quit and give up. Let's look at Psalms 140, verse 13, the third one. So we have productive, the upright are patient. Here's the third one, the upright are praising. Listen to Psalms 140, verse 13. Surely righteous people are praising your name. The godly or the upright in the King James will live in your presence. Woo, the upright will live in your presence. I love to feel the presence of God when I come to church. I love to go into my prayer closet and feel the presence of God. I love to be driving down the road, listen to a worship song and feel the presence of God. But the Bible says the same Hebrew word, yashar. It said the righteous, the upright people will live in the presence of God. Brother Lawrence wrote about practicing the presence of God. He said that he was doing a, a menial task of work, washing the dishes and still feel the presence of God. I mean, you can be working in some bad environments at work and still feel the presence of God. You can go to school where they say they outlaw prayer and still feel the presence of God. You can go to a ball game and still feel the presence of God. You can be at Walmart and still feel the presence of God. Amen. It's not a thing where we come in and there's a visitation on Sunday. We feel God for an hour or two. But no, God is looking for a habitation where I can feel the presence of God when I call on the name of Jesus wherever I'm at. I'm in the middle of the hospital. I can call on the name of the Lord and feel the presence of God. I can whisper his name and feel the presence of God. The upright are praisers. Are you a praiser? Well, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm not that emotional. I've watched ball games with some of you, and you get emotional about the right things. Amen? We're screaming, we're shouting at a ball game or some, something on TV or at a movie, but we come to church and do a golf clap. Praise the Lord. We're dignified all of a sudden. Come on. You get excited about something, but we're praisers. 
Listen to what it says. This was in my devotion this week in Psalms 43, 5. It says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? This may describe some of you. The upside down turtle. It says, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. We can praise him again. When you feel discouraged, you feel defeated, you feel upside down like that turtle, we can begin to praise him again. Some of us, we've lost that praise, we've lost that passion, but we need to come into the presence of God and seek his face. This is what it says in Psalms 92. It says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning. Your faithfulness in the evening. Accompanied by the ten stringed instruments, a harp, a melody, a lyre. It says, you thrill me, Lord, for all that you've done for me. I will sing for joy because of what you've done. When was the last time you said, Lord, you thrill me? It is good to give thanks to the Lord. It is it's, it's something good. Pastor, I want to do something good in 2021. Give praise to God. And that's stirring yourself up. Some of the saints that were generals of the faith, they would get up and begin just to thank the Lord. Some of them would just dance before the Lord in the first 10 minutes. I think it was Smith Wigglesworth would get up and motivate himself to praise the Lord. And when we do that, the presence of God comes in because God inhabits the praises of his people. It says in Psalms 34, verse 1 through 4, I will bless the Lord on Sundays. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Say all. Not just on tax return day. (laughs) Not just on payday. Not just on a holiday. But I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make the boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let's exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from some of my fears. You see the connection, he said, he began to praise, he began to offer thanks. He said, and God delivered me from all of my fears. When anxiety and fear tries to come upon you, begin to start praising the Lord. God, I thank you, you provided before, and you're going to do it again. God, I thank you, you've healed my body before, you're going to do it again. God, I thank you, we couldn't pay the bill that one month, and you made a way where there seems to be no way. God, I praise you, God. Remember what God has done for you. Remember what he's brought you through and bless him and thank him. It says, and he delivered me from all of my fears, not just some of them, but all my fears. But but you need to understand, this may be a daily thing. When fear tries to come on you every day, start praising, start worshiping, start being thankful as you enter the presence of God. Again, the upright, we're going to live in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. It's not that I have to chase down an evangelist or attend a revival every night of the week, but I can live in the presence of God just through praise and prayer. Here's the fourth one, is praying. Look at Proverbs 15, 8. This is where we want to get today. That was all the introduction. I'm teasing. This is the last one. Proverbs 15, 8. In the New Living, you're going to want to write this, highlight this same Hebrew word, Yashar. Proverbs 15, 8. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but he delights in the prayers of the upright. Isn't that something to know that the Lord, man, I, I love it when they pray. They're praying prayers of faith. When was the last time you prayed a prayer of faith? Not just a prayer that you could figure out or not just something that you could map it out for them or try to fix somebody or or play Cupid. When was the last time that you really prayed and put things in the hand of God? It said he delights in the prayers of the righteous. He loves it when we pray. He loves it when we seek his face. Jesus, I love it. When he was praying and he had a relationship with God and he had a confidence. 
They said, Lord, I thank you that you hear my prayers. And may we have that kind of faith this next 21 days as we fast, as we pray. We say, Lord, I thank you that you hear my prayers. Again, it's not about being religious. It's about being righteous through Christ. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalm 63, verse 3 and 5. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live and lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast, and I will praise you with songs of joy. Stop thinking about what you're going to have to give up these next 21 days. But notice what it says. You satisfy me, Lord, more than the richest feast, and I will praise you with songs of joy. We want to be upright before the God. You know that little prayers lead to little answers. So I want you to pray prayers of faith. And here's the key. You have to connect your prayers to God's promises. I remember being a teenager and I, I, I prayed selfish prayers. I asked God that he would bless me with a Lamborghini. 15 years old. <laughs> Just for, You know what I mean? And how many, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. And when we do ask, we ask with the wrong, you know what I mean? We ask with the wrong motives. And friends, we need to come back and say, God, help me help other people. If God answers all your prayers and it only benefits you, you're praying the wrong prayers. We ought to be praying, God, I'm believing God this year we're going to pay off this church, God. I'm believing, God, this year you're going to bless us that we can build a gymnasium for our students and our food pantry. Wouldn't that be awesome? I believe in you, God. I think we fed nine, ten thousand 10,000 people in our community. Let, 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 let God provide, and we can do even more with your help, God. Send laborers into the harvest. Jesus said, hey, I want you to pray. He said, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. I want you to pray that God would send laborers into the harvest. That is a promise from God. I'm thankful for everybody that helps us with worship. But you can pray a scriptural prayer. Lord, send laborers into the harvest. Send somebody to lead worship every week. Amen? Here was a promise from God. It says in Psalms 85, verse 6, Will you not revive us again that your people would rejoice in you? Notice this was a prayer request. But listen to the promise in Isaiah 57, 15. It says, I revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite. So we have a prayer request, but we also have a promise from God. So what are your promises? I think back of the Hebrew revival, and they're praying. I said, have you tried prayer? You know, we've tried everything we can do, and he said, have you tried prayer? And all of a sudden, he shows up on, at, the, at the meeting there, and he preached, and when he left the building at 11 p.m., there were 600 people outside, 100 in a nearby dance hall. Uh, other 500 had been awakened out of bed and felt compelled to walk to this place. How many know that's a move of God? And Campbell preached the gospel to them until 4 a.m., which then he was requested to come to the police station where there were 400 more people gathered baffled as to why they were there on his way to the station he came across more people along the road who were crying out to God for mercy and revival continued for three more years with 75 percent of the converts coming to Jesus outside of the church building that's some big prayers how many we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to do miracles in our life in our families, in our church. God, send awakening, send revival to Good Shepherd. God, revive me. I heard someone once asked an old preacher, he said, how can we have revival? He said, I want you to draw a circle on the floor and don't get out of that circle until God sends revival. 
cry out to God, say, God, I'm not leaving this place until you, until you revive my soul. I, I can't determine what everybody else is going to do, but God, I'm asking you revive my soul, God. Give me back my song. Give me back my joy, God. I don't want to be upside down anymore. Tr feel like I can't, uh, I've lost traction, God, but I want to be upright through you, God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit is here. Search our hearts, God. Are the areas of our heart that we're leaning one way or another, God, when you're calling us to be upright? And your word says the, the path of the upright is an open highway. Your word says that the upright will live in peace. The upright will live in your presence, God. Your word says the upright, God, our kids will be blessed. Your word says the upright, God. Hallelujah, you delight in our prayers, God. It's not a burden when we pray. We're not burdening you. Yes, there's, there's needs around this world, but our requests matter to you. You take delight in our prayers, God. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. You're here, God. Search our hearts, God. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence here today. You could end the live stream there. I'm going to take a moment here in just a minute. But, Ron, I think, does somebody have the slips? Best guy.